In this video, we'll go over the basics of creating a site plan or plot plan in Chief Architect, as well as how it interacts with your terrain. If you are trying to create a site plan or plot plan from a PDF, image, or DWG, these will not be covered in this video. We do have other resources on our website for methods on creating a site plan from those files. Let's start by taking a look at the plan file we'll be adding our site plan to. It is recommended we add in the site or plot to the existing plan and not import or create a site plan in a separate plan file that has to then be copied and adjusted over to your existing plan file. Let's first start by changing our plan view over from the working plan view, or whatever plan view that you may currently be in, over to our plot plan view. If you aren't familiar with the functions of plan views, I strongly recommend checking out our resources on our website in regards to plan views. But briefly, it did change our layer set. Obviously, we're looking at things in a different way, but also it's going to change numerous defaults that are in our plan. One being the default CAD layer. So you can see this CAD line is on the CAD plot plan layer. So all the CAD that we use to draw in our plot plan will be on the CAD plot plan layer and not on the default CAD layer, or maybe another CAD layer that would show up in other views. Before we start drawing in the CAD lines of our site plan, we'll want to make sure we have a good reference. For example, let's say I know that from the bottom left hand corner of my house, six feet, six inches left and 20 feet down is the bottom left hand corner of my site plan. To make sure I'm starting my site or plot plan from that exact distance, I want to place some points. The point tools are located here on the toolbar or under the CAD menu, then points. I'll start by placing a point at the outer edge of my exterior walls here at the corner of my house. From here, I can use the option input point to make sure that relative from my current point, I'm accurately placing another at exact distance away. For my example, I'm setting the X axis to minus six feet, six inches to make sure the point goes six feet, six inches to the left of my current point and minus 20 feet. So it's 20 feet down from my current point as well. And if we zoom out here, we'll see the second point that was placed. And now that I have my reference point here, I can use the rectangular polyline tool to draw on my plot. Or maybe I have quadrant bearing information that I'd like to input. And to do so, I'll want to go under the line tools and choose the option input line. And briefly, to do so, you would need to make sure that you reference the start point or the active point in your plan. And if you go down to number style, you want to change the angle style to quadrant bearing. and check this option here for polar. Then you can go ahead and start plugging in your quadrant bearings. If you are going to be using quadrant bearings, it's going to be important to have a north pointer defined in our plan. We'll go over that briefly here in a moment. The north pointer tool can be found under the CAD menu. This will be especially important, again, if you are going to be inputting quadrant bearings. With the tool in your hand, you can simply find a spot on the plan, left click and drag, and the pointer will be created. If you highlight the north pointer, you can use the rotation handle here at the top to rotate the north pointer, or you can open the object specification by going down to open object, and you can adjust the angle here. But you may need to change your number style back over to degrees and plug in the angle. For this example, I'm keeping things simple and drawing out a basic rectangular polyline. The starting point being the point that I've placed away from my house. Once I've gotten a rough shape established, I can now start to make changes to the shape and the size of my site plan as needed. If this is going to be a 60 foot by 90 foot lot, I can use the temporary dimensions to make sure the box I've drawn is that size. If temporary dimensions are off, you can find the toggle for them on this vertical toolbar. Making sure I have my right edge highlighted, I'll go ahead and highlight this value, change it to 60 feet, and that way my right edge moves. I'll do the same for the top edge, highlight the edge, click on the value, change it to 90 feet, and that way my top edge is adjusted. If you'd like to show the lengths of the lines of our plot, as well as maybe show the quadrant bearing, we'll need to adjust our CAD defaults. We'll go into default settings, CAD, General CAD, we'll click on edit. And here we'll see the current CAD layer, 
as well as the displayed line length format and the display line angle as options. We'll go ahead and click on define next to the displayed line length format. I can adjust the format of the length that will appear on the lines of my site plan. I'll go ahead and change it to feet. The accuracy can also be changed down below. I can change the accuracy to smallest fraction or decimal places. I'll go ahead and change its decimals so my line lengths show up in decimal feet. Clicking OK, I'll go back into my CAD defaults, and then I can take a look at my display line angle as option. Right now it's set to minutes plus seconds, but I can go ahead and change it over to quadrant bearing. This way when I go ahead and click OK, and then done, my angles will show up as quadrant bearings. So let's go ahead and highlight our polyline, go down to open object, and then if I go over to my line style panel here, I can go ahead and check the options under display options, show length, and show angle. And once I click OK, I'll go ahead and see my lines and feet, and I'll see my quadrant bearings as well. You may find that you need to move your north pointer somewhere else, and that's okay. While the angle of the north pointer matters, the position of it does not, so we're free to move it where we'd like. You may notice that you might struggle moving it because of the snaps, so you can hold Control or Command to move it freely across the drawing sheet. And before we move on, you may have noticed that we still have these temporary points here. There are a couple ways for us to delete them. With nothing highlighted, we can press the Delete key in our keyboard to delete one, and then the next. Or under the Point Tools, we can go to Delete Temporary Points, and that'll clear out all temporary points that are on our plan. Let's now focus on creating our setback lines. We can do this very easily by first highlighting our existing site plan CAD lines. Then on the edit toolbar at the bottom left hand corner, we'll click on copy paste to copy it. Afterwards, there is a child option here to paste hold position, which will paste a copy in the exact same position. It's not apparent, but the copy is already highlighted for us. So we'll now just go ahead and use the concentric resize edit button, also located on the edit toolbar, to resize the shape concentrically. Before we go ahead and do that, there is a child option here to set a concentric jump. This will specify a distance to which this selection will jump to concentrically. Let's go ahead and set this jump distance to 5 feet. Now if I place my cursor over a corner handle, I can simply just click and drag inward, and it will concentrically resize the whole shape and have it jump to a distance of 5 feet offset from the original. This did, however, copy all the attributes. A solid line, decimal feet, and the quadrant bearings. So I want to go ahead and adjust these things. If I click on an open object, and the polyline specification over in line style, I can go ahead and remove the options to show length and show angle. I can click on my line style, change it over to a dashed line, and also click on my color, and maybe change it over to a lighter color. Now it looks a lot more like setback lines. I can wrap things up here with my setback lines by maybe drawing in some end-to-end -end dimensions. So under my dimension tools, end-to-end, -end, I can start drawing some dimensions out from my setback to my lot lines. And if I need to, I can make some adjustments if necessary. I've now swapped over to my terrain plan view. If you don't have a terrain plan view, that's okay. You may be using an older plan template and depending on your needs, you may not want to generate a terrain anyways. If you do, there is a question you'll want to pose to yourself. Do I use this site plan as the terrain perimeter? Or do I keep the two separated, allowing for the possibility of the terrain to expand past our site to include surrounding features? If you'd like to have your site plan act as your terrain perimeter, you can simply right click any edge of the site plan and choose the option Convert Polyline. Or you can highlight it and use the Convert Polyline Edit button on the Edit Toolbar. This will give you the option to convert the CAD polyline into a terrain perimeter. You'll then be presented with the Terrain Specification dialog where you can immediately modify some of your terrain settings. We have resources on our website that go over building and modifying your terrain. 
With our terrain highlighted and our active layer display options open, which is here on the right vertical toolbar, we can see that our CAD lines for our plot plan are now on the terrain perimeter layer. And it's a little subtle, but they're also green, just like how the layer color is set to. If you'd instead like to keep the site plan and the terrain separated, you can copy the existing site plan by highlighting it, then using the same copy paste tool that we have before. Paste hold position. Maybe change it to a larger size. But of course, because this is going to be our terrain perimeter and not our site plan, let's go ahead and go back into line style and remove those show length and show angle options. And then repeat the same process of converting the polyline to the terrain perimeter. If you'd like the terrain to be on a different floor, like floor zero, you can simply copy the site plan, move down to floor zero, then use the paste hold position option under the edit menu and then paste. And finally, we'll wrap things up by removing the show length and show angle option. And then we'll convert the polyline into a terrain perimeter. And now your terrain will be on floor zero. For guidance on working with the terrain and sending the site plan to a layout sheet, check out the resources on our website.